flagship of the British Pacific Fleet, the battleship HMS Howe brings to Sydney 35,000 tons of swift, hard-hitting sea power. On the way to join her American allies in the final reckoning with Japan, she's one of the most formidable capital ships afloat. And she's all British, from her up-to-the-minute armament to the men who man her, the tough fighting men of the Royal Navy. Sydney does not see much of her as she gropes her way down the harbour through one of the worst dust storms the city has experienced. Visibility is practically nil, but it's a great day for Sydney and for the men of the Howe, who in tropical white uniforms keep alive the old naval tradition of manning ship. And there is no mistaking the warmth of this welcome. She's found a quiet haven, but it's only for a little while. And here's Captain W. McCall, DSO, captain of the Howe, with his dog Guinness. Life had no zest for Guinness without a post. Now he has a post all his own. A Scotsman invented this custom to save razor blades. You have to get permission in the Navy to grow a beard and a special dispensation to take it off. But now the Liberty men are on parade awaiting the order to disperse. Among them, the Royal Marines. Originally a unit of the home fleet out of Scapa Flow, the Howe went to the Mediterranean in June 1943 and took part in the Sicilian campaign. She was the first British battleship to enter the port of Taranto when the Italian fleet surrendered. And later on, she saw service in the Indian Ocean. What? No taxis? But they're not downhearted. After all, you can see an awful lot if you use your shore legs. And Sydney's an eye-opener, all right. I'm from London. We've been messing around the Mediterranean. We bombarded Toronto, Salerno. We also went and got the, uh, the Italian fleet out. And now we're coming to Sydney to have a good time. And by the way things are, we're going to have it. Now, fancy coming all the way to Australia to make your film debut. Now, I'm very, very glad to be in Australia, and I must say that I've been very surprised at the reception that we've had. Hey, by God, it's champion, as we say in Yorkshire. Uh, Leeds is famous for its uh, girls. Of course, uh, I haven't uh, yet found a girl in Australia who's acquired the kangaroo waistline, but uh, I'm still hoping. Last night, when I was dancing with a very beautiful young lady, she turned to me suddenly and said, you look very much like George Formby. Well, uh, it would be an idea, wouldn't it, to have his bankroll and... Uh, well, very nice if the government didn't take all of it before you had a chance to spend it. Not bad for the silent service. But it's time for ceremonial, and the Guard of Honour presents arms as Rear Admiral Moore, Naval Officer in charge of Sydney Naval Establishments, comes aboard. Traditions handed down through the centuries are kept alive in the everyday shipboard routine of the Royal Navy. And there are few quite so impressive as divisions, the naval equivalent of the Army Church Parade. The Howe is the flagship of Admiral Sir Bruce Fraser, the Commander-in-Chief of the British Pacific Fleet. She is the first British battleship with quadruple turrets. And in addition, she has 16 5.25 dual-purpose guns and enough close-range anti-aircraft equipment to make things very hot for attacking aircraft. Her 10 14-inch guns pack a budget of bad news for the men of Nippon. England's mighty battle fleet has seen action in many waters. It has practically destroyed the German Navy, has overcome the menace of the U-boat, has cleared the Mediterranean, and through hazardous ice-bound seas, has convoyed ships to Russia, laden with food and war material. And soon, British ships will plow tropic seas, for side by side with the victorious American fleet in the Pacific, it has a new role to play. Attention, Nippon! There is to be an eclipse of the rising sun. 